And this is In The Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr., thanking you as always for joining us on this lovely day the Lord has made and wherever you are. Whatever you're doing, as always, we pray that you're keeping the Lord Jesus Christ out front. Now, we definitely want to uh, thank y'all for joining us. Hope you had a great day. Hope you've had a great week. I know you've been watching the TV and everything going on with the debates and everything. So uh, definitely keep everybody in prayer as we, as a country, continue that process. But for right now, though, let's get into what the Lord has shown us today. So let's get started. Our morning scripture reading comes from Romans 8. 28 through 31 you know it very well romans 8 28 through 31 and we know that in all things god works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose for those god foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters and those he predestined he also called those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And that's a big amen there. Regardless of what happens in November, whatever you're feeling right now after this week, just know that the Lord Jesus Christ is still on the throne. He is still making moves. He has still got his hands on everything and everyone. And with that being said, let's keep it to the basics. Let's major on the majors and let's minor on the minors as believers in the one true God who sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. Let us pray for these people, shall we? Heavenly Father, we come before you with a thankful heart knowing you're sovereign and you're wise we lift up this country and its leaders to you seeking your guidance your protection and wisdom and all decisions they make and the ones that we will have to make here very soon Lord we pray for our president Congress and all those in positions of authority grant them the wisdom to lead with integrity and justice we pray they seek your will in every action and policy, striving to serve the people with humility and compassion, knowing that regardless of who we voted for, regardless of what party they're on, we need you to always be involved. We ask for your blessing over this nation. Help us see that the time for repentance is now Help us see that the time to turn back to you is now, that it may be a place of peace, prosperity, and freedom. Help us, Lord, to be a nation that reflects your love and truth, not our interpretation of love and truth, upholding the values of righteousness and justice. Lord Jesus, we pray for unity amongst our people. So many are divided on worldly issues that do not reflect your love in times of division and strife. May your peace prevail. Help us to love one another as you have loved us, breaking down the walls of hostility and building bridges of understanding and cooperation. We place our trust in you, Lord, knowing that you are the ultimate source of our strength and hope. Guide us in your ways and lead us in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our topic today is the unique among the common, God's purpose for the outlier. The unique among the common, God's purpose for the outlier and our discussion comes from acts 19 13 through 17 go ahead and turn there acts 19 13 through 17 reads as follows some jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the lord jesus over those who were demon possessed they would say in the name of the jesus whom paul preaches i command you to come out seven sons of seva a Jewish chief priests were doing this. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, 
and Paul I know about, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. When this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your already blessed word. Now, Lord, help us understand our position and prominence in the kingdom, knowing that we're not always going to fit in because it's not for us to fit in, but to do the will of you, O Lord, just as I hope to do now. Say what needs to be said, do what needs to be done. Remove me from the equation. Step forward and make things happen for the glorification of your will and your way. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. I'm sure there's someone here that can tell a story about when they went somewhere and stuck out like a light in the dark of rooms. People just knew that you were different. The energy in the room changed. People cannot help but notice. Some go as far as admitting they just had to come and meet you because they could just feel that you were different. I've been to many events where people would tell me how they could just feel I was a different person than those they were mingling with. And this is not to puff myself up or to puff you up because we know it's God's doing. We can't help it. We cannot help it. We've been infused with a divine uniqueness this world can see and do nothing about. Either they're going to accept it or they're going to reject it. The only thing they can do is try to imitate what we're doing. And it would be fine if they did, because as we strive to imitate and reflect Jesus Christ to the world, I would hope someone would want to follow this behavior because I'm following Jesus. And if they can understand through what I do and why I do, they come to the knowledge themselves and will desire relationship with Jesus Christ. But we also know there are those who do not want relationship with Christ. They want power. There is no aspiration to be like Christ, to be an ambassador to the kingdom of God. They want to be worshiped like God. They want to reflect the love, but manipulate it according to their terms and conditions and make it sound like God's love when it's not. They want to help people and appear to be so wise and yet their intentions have intentions. Have you ever met someone in, whose intentions had intentions? They do not want to be surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses of life and faith and obedience to Jesus Christ. They want followers who would prefer to be engaged by motivational speaking that sounds holy, but is solely focused on the person following or leading and not Jesus Christ. They want to be consistently told it's okay, knowing the truth of the matter is change is needed and they are being enabled to stay broken. They want to talk about functionality of Christianity, all the doing things, but have no concerns about anything spiritually connected to Jesus Christ. They just want to imitate truth, to manipulate truth, and they know it. We see it every day in the media. We see it every day in society. That's why I'm so glad that I'm not imitating the truth or manipulating the truth, but we are following the truth and that truth is that the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is the greatest news you'll ever hear because it was done to save the soul of all mankind even when you did not know him. And he did this when you were lost in your thoughts and serving this world's view of life. And you know what? The gift is still free right now. Even if you know someone living a lifestyle contrary to God's will, they need to know each time they wake up, 
It's another moment to give their life to Christ. It's another opportunity to give their life to Christ. And that, my friend, is what separates us from them. This is what makes us unique from the common. Now, you might ask yourself, how do I understand? How can I understand this uniqueness a little better? How do I understand its value and how it affects everyone around me? I'm sure you've got more questions. Well, let look, let's look at possible answers here in Acts 19, starting in verse 13. It's here we're going to formulate our position as the outlier. What is an outlier? Now, I went through and looked at a few dic uh, dictionaries and a few definitions. I like Oxford Dictionary's uh, def um, definition. It defines it as this. A person or thing situated away or detached from the main body or system. Now, here's some good theology here. One more time. An outlier is a person or thing situated away or detached from the main body or system. It's good theology because that is who we are. God's word tells us in 1 Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So when someone tells you how you're different, how you built different, how you want some different time, you let them know that you are God's special possession. Bought with the price of the blood of Christ. And I am his and you are his. And you've been called out to take that seriously. Because there are people wandering in the darkness of the world. And their mind and their heart need the illuminating revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. We, my friends are the outliers of this world that have been given great purpose for God's kingdom. But we got to know our position. So here are some thoughts. First of all, the understanding that we have more than just a desire to have power. We are more than just people looking for special ability, supernatural ability to puff ourselves up and be more than what God has made us to be. We are looking for more than just the desire and the ability to have godly power. Verse 13, some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to, tried, here it is, to invoke the name of Lord Jesus over those who were demon possessed. They would say, in the name of the Jesus who Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Seva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. You got to understand God was working through Paul in Ephesus to the point that power was coming out of his body and into items. How do we know this? Verse 11, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. That's just how much power was coming out of Paul. God was doing this through Paul for his glory and to the benefit of the to people to be healed physically and spiritually. Paul was a conduit. Sons of this Jewish priest had no desire to be a conduit. They wanted to be the source. It's heard in phrasing, in whom Paul preaches. They knew Paul was a believer and so he had to get some power. They simply tapped into the connection Paul had with Jesus, but had no connection of their own. So, and really, and, all, and if we're going to be real about it, they never tapped into connection. They were making every attempt to do so, but were unsuccessful. Why? Because they did not have a connection themselves to the source. It's like trying to borrow electricity from someone else's house, and you get a no. But you acting like you've got power in your house. You don't. And everybody can see it. They knew he was a believer and they were trying. The desire, the power to cast out the demons only, but ha not have a relationship to the one that does the casting. And that's how it is for many people. They want to prophesy 
but have no direction from God. They want to cast out demons, heal the sick, but have no relationship with Jesus Christ. Because it's all about them and their ministry and not the kingdom of Christ. They want power not to proclaim. They want power not relationship. They want power not to point to the cross and say, this is the way, the truth, the light, the life, the love, the narrow gate, the only way. They just want you to look at them. And when you get around people that just want you to trust them on all things spiritual and not ever hear them point to the Lord, that's a red flag. And you should keep that in mind wherever church you go to, whatever ministry you're a part of. Do you ever hear them talk about the cross where our Savior died? Not only do we have more than just a desire to have power, but our Lord is known, is known by the demons. Did you know this? Scripture says this in verse 15. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know and Paul I know about, but who are you? Then the man, verse 16, who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. For the outlier, it's important to understand two things. If you do and this is important. If you do what thus said the Lord, evil will hear about you and they will know who your Lord is already. Scripture shows us that the demons that he knew who Jesus was. And also in the same sentence, look at how much work Paul was doing in the same sentence of Christ. In the same dialogue, what I'm trying to say is. He knew about Paul. He didn't know Paul, but he had heard about Paul. Paul was doing that much damage to where even on demon radio, they were talking about Paul. Now I'm saying that in, in jest, there is no demon radio, but you get what I'm saying. They're communicating. Someone somewhere in that realm knows about what you're doing. Regardless of what level, whatever rank, whatever you believe in that area of demonology, the scriptures show us here that he had heard about Paul, but then he said, who are you? And that makes all the difference when you see someone trying to face a demon or any unclean spirit for that matter. The outcome of your interaction, of their interaction with someone who harbors an evil spirit will be determined by your connection to Jesus Christ. They will determine in that moment if you're anything on their spiritual radar. They're going to know from the time they come across you in your presence if that ever happens, whether or not you're even a credible threat. And what we see here is the sons of Seva were never a credible threat. And when you see people pointing towards the buzzwords like prophetic healing, your breakthrough, come and get cleansed from demons, your, your next door should be do does their intention have intentions? What is their relationship with Jesus like? Are they preaching repentance and salvation? Do they believe in the power of Christ or do they believe in the power of influence by citing his name? Are they pointing to themselves or to Christ? And when you find that out, I can assure you how evil spirits interact with these people will be different from those who have no connection. Here the demon knows Jesus. He has heard of Paul and doesn't even know who these people are in front of him. And in a conflict like this, there these, these, these guys, these sons of Seva, becomes nothing more than a punching bag for demons. And he saw they had no covering. They weren't covered in the blood of Christ. He saw they had no connection, no relationship, no acceptance of Jesus Christ as Lord. No Christ in them, and he beat them like a drum, shamed them in their nakedness, and even injured them. They did not have the Spirit of the Lord on them, and they ran because that's all you can do 
when you're not protected by Jesus, you run or die in ignorance. And maybe that's where you are because you need the connection. You're tired of running from these forces out here who want nothing more than your destruction. They understand that they're coming for you. And maybe you think going to church and sitting in the pew every Sunday saves you. If you still have not given your life to Christ, coming to church every Sunday will not save you because you're still not connected. You can be in a house all day that does not have power going to the box. True statement. You can be in a house all day and never have electricity going to your breaker. You got to have the connection to the power. You need to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and maybe you need to go through baptism classes or whatever you have at your church to truly understand your Bible and understand the significance of baptism so that you may take of communion knowing it's of great significance, but the choice, here it is, has to be yours. I'm not going to sell it to you. No one is. You've got to make the choice on that. And then finally, understanding the outlier's purpose is reflected in faith to Jesus, the desire of mere posers who are eventually exposed by the world and who are influential to the revelation of Jesus to this world. Let's fix it up. The outlier's purpose is reflected in their faith to Jesus Christ. It's also because of their faith in Jesus Christ, that's, that's the impact. The ripple is this. The posers out there, these mere posers out there, who go out there thinking that they're doing something and get exposed, serves a purpose. That's the first, that's the first ripple. And what happens is their event, when they are exposed, second ripple, is how they're influential to the revelation of Jesus Christ to this world. Third ripple. Why Now, why is that? Because the junk they're trying to do gets exposed by the evil and whatever power they're trying to exercise, it all gets blown up in their face. The people see what happens when you mess with Jesus Christ, when you play with God, and guess what happens? They come to the revelation of Jesus Christ, and as a result, my friend, they turn from their wicked ways because guess what? They don't want that happening to them. They're telling themselves, you know what? I'm not going to play with this Jesus. I'm not going to play with Jesus Christ. I don't want to be on that side of history to save my life. Maybe I need to get rid of this stuff. Maybe I need to get rid of this sin in my life and fix myself and, count and, and course correct and come into the saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, how do we know this had an effect? Verse 17, when this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. What happens when the word gets out, the people stop playing with the name of Jesus for their own personal gain because of the faith and the work of Paul, because of a group of people thinking they could do the same works without the relationship Paul had with Christ, supernatural response that occurred from their lack of connection to Christ, in which Paul had and preached resulted in the people realizing realizing this is real it's not a joking matter and we need to respect the name of Jesus Christ not only that verses 18 through 20 we see the people confessing their errors and sorcery and burning scrolls publicly which is significant and how impactful this whole event was on the community people saw these people going from living a life that was contrary to God and coming into the life provided by Jesus through his birth, death, and resurrection. The people who burned these scrolls were not documented as debating with people, asking their friends should they or not know. The Bible does not say that. The Bible says confessions were made and public repentance was done and they didn't sell the books. They burnt the scrolls. I'm sorry, they, they weren't books, they were scrolls. They got rid of the knowledge and what happened? And because of these actions, 
Verse 20, in this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. But it doesn't it doesn't begin if you are not working your position as an outlier. God's purpose for you standing out in the crowd is to begin the events to take place for the revelation of his kingdom in heaven here on earth. Be valued and understand that you serve a purpose, regardless if you think so or not. There's a purpose for you. And the power works through you by the Holy Ghost to impact everybody around you for that revelation. Yeah, you can have some posers, but even God can use those posers, but there won't be no posers if they have nothing to pose from. You are that person. So stay motivated, stay encouraged, and understand that even if it happens where someone's trying to imitate you, let them imitate you under Christ-like conviction, and those who don't will get dealt with. And even those who get dealt with, their event can be used to bring revelation to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And maybe you're out there and you need prayer. Maybe you need understanding. Call us, contact us via the information provided early in the show, get-prayer.com, get-prayer.com. We will commu communicate with you and let you know how much God loves you and begin your process of understanding how you are an outlier in this world and how God uses outliers for the glorification of his kingdom. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And God willing, we'll talk to you next week. You take care.